Okay, how about now? I should know.
Oh, hello, hello, patient people of the internet. What is going on? My name is Josh. Welcome to Bonus Stage. Uh, we have with us today one Rob Kovacs. Uh, many of you know him from the raid that he just did onto the channel. Uh, <laughs> Rob, how are you doing tonight, man? Great. So pumped. So amped. So excited to listen to this album. <laughs> again and again, as I'm sure you've listened to it many times. I have. <laughs> I mean, it's the first time with people, with other people, with other people. Yeah, no, I, I've I've been lucky to to hear the album um, and uh, and appreciate it and enjoy it. Uh, really looking forward to sharing it with you all. Um, yeah, but you know, I, I also want to acknowledge that this is perhaps the first time that we've actually had somebody coming on to let's listen, not to you know showcase work that they have covered, but that they have instead. Uh, composed for a video game. Uh, so thank you, Rob, for being our first. And, oh, wow. uh, and it's a huge honor. <laughs> That's very cool. I'm glad to be the first. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, you know, despite that, you have been talking about this project um, for a while, actually. I think just about every time you've been on bonus stage, whether it's for Music Online or Let's Listen, uh, this has always kind of been something that you've been mentioning, almost like a backburner project or something, you know, to be released. Uh, you know, And in fact, the timeline for this project, uh, I believe you said you started working on it uh, five years ago at a game jam. Can you tell us how that all kind of came together? Yeah, I was actually thinking about that recently. Like, I've been doing 88-bit, which is how you know me and how a lot of people know me in the VGM scene, as long as this, as I've been working on this composition. So, while everyone knows me as like was knows me as video game cover pianist, I'm also been composing an actual soundtrack the whole time. So, but fi and finally, it's coming out. Um, so they've kind of worked. Yeah, they were happening at the same time. So that's why I've always, I guess, always mentioned it because it was always there. Um, <laughs> How did this come about? We started a global game. We participated in a global game jam, which is an event. There's a bunch of game jams, but basically you have a limited amount of time, in this case, two days to make a game. And they give you some parameters to try to hit. Um, the five of us didn't know each other at first. Three of us had done similar projects for movies called the 48-hour film project. I had done about 10 of those where you, write, you make up a movie, you film it, and you score it all in two days, 20, 48 hours. And it's super intense, but you it's really fun, and you end up with some sort of art, some sort of movie at the end of it. <laughs> so um, the graph the cinematographer and that and the video in the movie stuff met these two programmers, and then he invited me to do the music, and he invited the director, Ben, to uh, just kind of be there. <laughs> he didn't he didn't have like a programming knowledge at the time, but he was uh, he's definitely smart, intelligent, and creative, and it was great. You know, have them there for the beginning, and uh, so the five of us made this like VR thing. The programmers kind of knew they wanted to do a VR game, weren't quite sure what, and then through some trial and error, kind of figured out like, oh, if I lock this object in place and I shoot a beam to it and like move the controller, it propels me forward, and that was really thrilling, and that was the ultimately the genesis of the game. But then after that, it was, how can we make that happen without making us feel sick? <laughs> because in VR, motion sickness is a real thing. When your body feels something different than what your brain is seeing, brain doesn't like it, and, or, and you start to feel motion sickness. So we you know, worked pretty hard to get rid of all the motion sickness in the game um, by removing the walls and the ceilings and the things that were close to you that create that motion sickness feeling also giving you complete control of how you move so like if something moves you in vr when you don't do it motion sickness yeah but if you like do something physical to move then it feels natural and it makes sense so it's in that in that case the game is really groundbreaking because that is an issue with a lot of other vr games mm -hmm. um so that's how i got started in them and uh, with them and um the first, the first song we're going to hear, the first two tracks we're going to hear are, um, the first one's called Platform. It's really just the level select song, which is based off of the next track called the Stray Light Theme. And that's the, the track that I wrote that weekend. Um, we wanted to hit some sort of like 80s target parameter. They just kind of randomly had different things you can try and hit in your game. And 80s was one of them. So I was like, well, I've got this 80s synthesizer called a Prophet 5. It's literally from like 1980. Mine is from probably 82 or something. Oh. And it's like, all right, well, I'll use that. So 
used that to make all the sounds, came up with my own sounds, and um, um, I actually don't even have some of them anymore because um, I didn't save it, oh. uh, like the opening pad. But something cool about it is that, so it was so early, and it was one of the first synthesizers that you could play more than one note at a time. Um, you could play up to five notes. So like a piano, I can play all 88 notes at once if I want. Please do. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but a profit five, you can only play, if I did that, you'd only hear like five notes. You'd hear something like that. So something cool, like if you play five notes in one hand and like five different notes in another hand, it'll like almost like strobe light them. Like they'll, they'll cancel each other out. Mm. So that's kind of how I came up with this pad in that first, in this, which will be the second track. Just this kind of oscillating thing using the limitation of the synthesizer itself. Mm. Um, so um, I could talk about this first track a lot because I didn't have much to go off of and right. um, yeah. there was just the concept we knew we wanted to kind of float in space and I didn't have any graphics yet just this like node this pink node which you kind of have a node and we have a, a node in chat we have a, a, a an emote in my stream can someone post the, the stray light node oh, or yes, the stray yeah. light emote so it's like blue and dark purple but it it used to be just like pink it was just like one pink geographic blob <laughs> so that was all i had to go off of i, I um, find it reminiscent of um of those uh those blue orbs in super mario galaxy and uh, yeah that's something people compare the game to a lot yeah yeah some similar there for sure that's uh it's very calming <laughs> so yeah so we tried those are the anchor nodes are the things you connect to and, and swing around from so we tried to create something i tried to create something that was like floaty and it's it's like a new experience. You've never experienced this in real life. You can't float in real life, but in VR, you kind of feel like you're actually doing it. So what would it feel like to kind of be groundless? And um, so I came up with this really slow progression and even like kind of wavy like sounds like wow that might imit imitate lift. Mm -hmm. um, and just like the awkwardness of like, I don't know how this, like you're moving in a weird way that you've never moved before. Um, another thing I never mentioned, I did... Um, um, well, I swear we'll listen to the music, but there's a lot of thought that went into it. <laughs> no, we're getting I into did, the uh, meat too. That's all good stuff. Um, anyone ever do super jet, uh, water jet packing? Water jet packing? Um, you basically strap on a jet pack type thing that's connected to a boat and water. And like it, it just shoots water out the back and it, you can like fly with water, right. this water jet pack. And you got like a and, hose that, uh, that yeah, connects big, to the water and so you can get a continuous feed and yeah. It's super cool. Yeah, if anyone gets to do it, it's super fun. Um, but it's so hard to control. Like every little movement sends you some other way. And it's very awkward trying to get the hang of it. So that was kind of my inspiration too. The musically, it's it's kind of awkward. You hear the percussion come in and it's very like disjointed. Uh, but eventually it settles into a groove and like you get the hang of it and it's just pure joy, hopefully at this point of the game. Yeah, no, and, and I there. think the the music video for that second song really uh, really highlights that as well. Oh man, good! I told him I was like, try to play because that's our that's our programmer Dan Siri. He uh, I was he was doing all the videos, and I was like, all right, try to imagine like this is your first time playing Straylight, like you're not a <laughs> pro. <laughs> you've been doing for yeah. five years, <laughs> and he did a good job. He did a good job. Oh man! So we're gonna hear two tracks, I think, right? Yep. The uh, the platform track is basically uh, this. Uh, it's a variation on the track I was just talking about, the Stray Light theme. So it's a variation of that. Mm -hmm. um, and then we'll hear the Stray Light theme after that with the video. Yeah. Yeah, they go very nicely together, folks. So thanks for hanging around. And um, and yeah, let's listen.
There we go. Lots of cheering, lots of applause in chat. Uh, lots of excitement for the first two tracks on the Straylight original game soundtrack. Rob, excellent work so far. Um, Thank you. Yeah, and that uh, that music video that we saw uh, was just released today, exclusive on the Flood Magazine website. Isn't that right, Rob? Yeah, they did a premiere, and they're a pretty big magazine. They do stuff like on Paramore and other big bands. Um, so to be on there is pretty awesome. So yeah, they premiered it earlier today. And uh, it's not even. I think it's still unlisted. I need to. Um, I need to make it public. On YouTube. <laughs> oh, nice. Well, oh man, that makes me feel all the more special. It's not even listed yet. Almost exclusive no. to Bonus Stage, but almost exclusive to Flood. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I love the exclusives, Rob. Um, okay, so I got to ask kind of a big, uh, overarching question here. Uh, I am actually holding on to uh, the last reason that you were on the show here, uh, the vinyl copy of uh, of Rob Kovacs, Let's Go. Oh, sorry, that says Let Go. <laughs> he did that on purpose. I did that on purpose. But now we have you here on the show uh, for music that you compose for a game uh, where you clearly do not want to let go. So my question is, you know, like... How does the archetype of being tethered relate to your current emotional state? <laughs> that was not on the notes. That was not. In the, <laughs> how does the, the archetype of of not of of being not tethered, be tethered or being not tethered? being tethered? You know, tethering in general. <laughs> um, to my emotional state, how do they relate? Oh. Um, I don't know. I feel pretty good where I'm at right now. I feel pretty happy with what I'm doing. I feel like I'm on my, I'm on the right path. I'm getting to create music and put it out there and make music for games, which I love. I never really thought that'd be something I do. I'm connecting with an incredible, with people like you and this incredible community of my own Twitch stream. And, um, like, I just feel super happy and and uh, and free. So if I guess I compare it to the game, like, yeah, you have freedom to explore and swing about and try things and, and fall and fail and try again. And so I think that I feel that's kind of where I'm at. I'm just like propelling myself forward. And it's been great. That's beautiful. Wow. Good job. Hey, let, let's see some claps in the chat. Rob <laughs> really, uh, really saved the show from that ginormous question. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. And it just continues on too. Like the entire soundtrack has that kind of like weight and feel to it. Um, lots of wonderful arpeggios and ostinatos and, and, and modes as well that kind of keep you uh, from feeling <laughs> super grounded. Um, yeah, that's yeah, absolutely man. incredible. What kind of like musical um, influences, you know, made you come to that, uh, the, the use of those modes and those arpeggios and those sounds? That, Last one I mentioned this in the interview today um, was in I was playing in an orchestra. I was I just got hired to play Petrushka by Stravinsky, which is this twenty minute orchestral piece, orchestral piece, super awesome sounding. Um, and I was playing the piano part, and there's this one section in Movement Four called Dance of the Coachman, which is just like a big like uh, no, it's not it. It's just like a big suspended dominant sound. It's just like sitting there like this and just like waiting. You're waiting for something to happen and like it never really does. It just kind of sits there. And like that's kind of the, sim I use a similar kind of chord um, for that last song. So that kind of has a, adds just like a weightlessness, uh, weightlessness mm -hmm. to it. And never, you know, you want it to go there. Now we're Get grounded. That major resolution. But when you're here, you're just waiting for it. So there's, there's some of that, especially on the last track. But there's also just a lot of like, um, mode shifts so it's going from like major to minor chords like borrowing from chords from either mode and it just keeps you kind of unsettled and you never there's the funk the chord progressions are never like functional like something like like um uh what key was i just in uh like a two five one is very like we can predict where it's going to go you can't mm -hmm. really predict where these chord progressions are going to go they just kind of shift on you and change on you and they throw you off um, but i love that i love that kind of sound um, as far as the inspiration goes, so yeah, Stravinsky, at least for one from that one, um, uh, and early video game music. So David Wise, Hip Tanaka, um, especially Hip Tanaka, actually, because he, I read in an interview 
So he's he did Earthbound, he did Metroid, he did a lot of the early black box Nintendo games like Ten Yard Fight or Balloon Fight. Um, but in Metroid, he specifically wanted to do something not so like upbeat and happy like Mario. He wanted to do something darker, and he thought his his idea was that the music in Metroid is the sound of the level. It's the sound of the world. And I thought that was so cool. And I thought it applies to this as well. It's like, we don't have much sound effects. There's no Foley. We're just kind of in space. There are sound effects. Like when you get by like these objects, they do make noise and make sound. But other than that, it's pretty silent. So I don't have a lot to compete with. Mm -hmm. And so I thought that's cool. So that was my kind of idea as well. Like each, almost every song was composed for a specific level in mind. Mm -hmm. And this was going to be the sound of that level. Well, and even if you did have to compete with the uh, with the sound effects, you um, were part of the sound design as well, weren't you? Yeah, so I had a lot of control. I could make sure that everything worked together. <laughs> um, and the director, Ben Barr, the level designer, he, he worked with me a lot on getting the sound effects. That was the hardest thing, because that was new for me, making sound effects, and I was limited with this primitive synthesizer. So we used, <laughs> so everything came from that still. And, uh, you know, was, we came up with some cool stuff, but it was uh, definitely... A lot of trial and error, just like guessing. Mm -hmm. um, another influence is definitely Marble Madness, which you all just heard me play. I played it beforehand. <laughs> but that soundtrack is just so wild. It's all over the place. And the game is kind of like, I compare Stray Lights to Marble Madness. You're in an abstract world. You're just trying to get from A to B. Um, there's no like characters in it. It's just weird. And the hard thing about Marble Madness is just moving the ball, like trying to control the ball. Same thing in Stray Light, just learning how to control your body and movement in this world. And uh, each level has its own sound, its own song, and it's just all over the place. And I, I love that, you know, now video game music tends to kind of have like a, a sound and it has to kind of play a more background role. But in this game, I didn't have to worry about that. And I just wanted to take that same spirit of let's create something totally new and like probably how they were back in 1983, 84, when they were working on that game. There was no precedent yet about what video game music should sound like. So I try to keep that mentality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, uh, and you know, wow, I'm sorry. I just had a huge brain fart. I was going to say something clever, and then I didn't. Um, <laughs> shall, we, uh, shall we continue on and save my butt and, uh, and yeah, keep going with this it. soundtrack? Awesome. Um, yeah, coming up next, and this is another video, I believe we have one for Star Forge. Yeah, and I'll, I'll say one thing about this. This was actually written with a different level in mind, which we don't, so, but it's perfect for level two and it works for this one. But I had a, there's a oranger level. It was like a, it's called, it was like a very gorgeous, like warm looking level. So that was the kind of the, the level that I had in mind. It was called, that one's called the, the last campfire. That's the level that I had in mind, but it, we ended up putting it on this one and it's like a perfect level two song. I think it's the shortest one on the track. It's the most chill one. It's the catchiest one. This, this in a lot of ways, this one is one of my favorites for sure. Right on folks. Well, in that case, this is star forge. Let's listen. <laughs> Thank you. 
Oh, right on. Yeah, that is the track. Oh man. Uh <laughs> I got to say like I can I can almost picture uh you playing that just on piano and that like like some some you know soft and gentle lyrics coming over it and that being on let go you know it, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's got the rob kovac signature on it i i love that track i love oh uh, thank you i like that too i did come up with that on piano first it was much faster because i went back and heard my original idea and it was like super quick it was like mm -hmm. Thankfully, I slowed it down. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, man. Oh, that's beautiful. Well, you know, I mean, since you didn't um, do that on piano for the soundtrack, uh, talk to me like a, the dummy that I am and tell me what is so special and unique about the Prophet 5 synthesizer. Well, it's one of, like I mentioned earlier, it's one of the first that can play. Poly, that's polyphonic. It can play more than one note at a time. Um, it's all analog. Uh, the oscillator is all, the source of the sound is all analog, but it has digital recall. So it's a little hybrid that way. But sonically, it just sounds unlike anything else. It, it's such a unique sound. Plus, I can you can create all your own sounds, just like any synthesizer. But mm -hmm. um, all the sounds in uh, this game I tweaked and, and created. So it doesn't sound, from what I've heard, it doesn't sound like any other type of synth track or synthwave stuff and has a unique tone to it yeah I think um so. there's a lot of guesswork like i was figuring it out as i this is the first time i ever really worked on it i used it for a couple small things here and there but this really gave me an opportunity to really learn how to use it um i had a midi kit installed so that allowed me to have the computer control it a little more so i could come up with notes and put them into the computer and then have the computer play the synth and then record the audio that way. Mm -hmm. I can also layer it, which actually makes it sound different. If you try to layer a via a virtual synth, it's just the exact same wave, uh, and it just gets louder. But if you do it on an analog synth, the wave is never exactly the same, and it's always a little bit different. And you get like weird kind of phase cancellations, and um, but it just sounds like it's immersive and all around you. So that last track was the third track I wrote for the game, and it was so. Just shortly after I got that MIDI track, MIDI kit installed, and I was able to layer stuff and really tune in uh, the notes that I want and the rhythms. And once I got that, it really allowed me to make the synth shine. Amazing. And and what of the other sounds on the album? Obviously, there's some percussive elements. Did you use the synth for like all of the basses as well? All those kind of tones. Uh, yeah, all the bass. Uh, tones are from the synth. It's got great, yeah, great bass capabilities, yeah. and all the percussion is from Logic. So different uh, drum kits. Um, most were actually most were in Logic already. Um, I did try some other sample packs, but I don't remember use if I used any of them. Most of them are all all Logic drum packs. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then there is a couple. There, there's a couple like synth sounds once in a while. That's actually just like a Logic VST. Um, nothing in that one. Um, and maybe if there's one in Void Compass that was not Prophet 5 and one in Ouroboros that was also like a mix. Oh, very That's cool. It. Well, we'll definitely want to hear you point those out when we hear them. Um, but coming up next, we've got the one that you were talking about, the one that had that kind of orange feel, the very warm, uh, the Last Campfire. That's for this track, correct? Or did I get that mixed up? Yeah, no, Last Campfire is, is right. Um, this one was, this one I guess was also kind of not written with any game, with any level in mind. It was just mm -hmm. like, this is the sound of the game where I'm halfway through it. Um, <laughs> this is a cool chord progression and patch and melody. And let's just see this, this fits. Let's just see where we put it and I ended up on level three or no, actually level four. Cause level three is a, uh, some songs are used twice. So level three has a different, is actually Ouroboros, but the next track on the album is actually level four. Right on. Okay. Well then, uh, this is it. This is the last campfire. Let's listen.
Yes, Songs of Healing, I see you in chat. Good. Yeah, whenever you drop the remix, uh, please just hit me up and we'll get you on for sure. We'll, we'll even pull Rob in and see how he likes it. Uh, <laughs> Heck yeah. yeah. Oh, man. No, Love your lyrics to that. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah. Well, who was it saying? Uh, Claude Achille, Achille, Claude Achille, Claude Achille. Uh, Claude Achille. Love that every track develops as it goes. Um, and of course we are talking about video game music here. So it begs the question, um, you know, since nobody's really played the game yet, are people going to be listening to these tracks on loop as they're in the level or is there like a time limit in effect or anything like that? Like what's what's the dynamic use of, uh, of these tracks in the game? I, the songs are basically on loop. We talked about early on, like what if would it be cool if like every checkpoint, something in the music changes at that point. And um, I nixed that pretty much right away because <laughs> A, the first song would have had to been completely redone. But also, it's, that's very limiting and musically musically limiting in a, a not good way. You end up getting loops that are just, you know, the song is just waiting for you um, to, to get to the next point. And then um, it either has to change right at the moment or change, it could go to a different part. But musically, it's just a, it's much more limiting. And I felt I could make a better soundtrack um, if you just let me write the best individual track that I could. So... Most songs just loop uh, one all the way through. They might have an intro and then a loop. Um, so, which is also similar to like classic video game music, like NES and Sega. Like that's right. how those were one big loop. <laughs> um, that last track we just heard has like several loop points. That's one of the few ones that has a couple loop points. So, like it's like an A B C section. So it plays all the way through A B C, and then it will loop back instead of the. It's like intro A B C, and so instead of the intro, it loops back to A. And then it gets through them all, and then it loops back to B, C, and then C again, and then finally it loops the whole thing. Oh wow! So that was kind of fun. Not not most of them can't do that, but that one had could have a couple different loop points. Oh, that's really cool. Well, I can't wait to try the game out and and hear that whole song as intended. Uh, <laughs> that's beautiful. Um, it it also kind of makes me think, you know, and also on the subject of. Uh, of dynamic music in video games. Um, you know, like, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Ben Prunty and his work on, uh, on a game called faster than light. Um, it, it kind of like has a similar, you know, spacey kind of vibe to it. Um, you know, but, uh, but I guess instead of like having these points where, uh, you have like an immediate change, there's like a, like a slow fade of, uh, of, uh, percussion that comes in during like battles or something like that and it'll fade out so that's that's what uh that's what made me think of that but you know also like uh just the way that you've composed the music you know it does feel very floaty you have lots of um you know weaving arpeggios and, and patterns and stuff like that it really uh brings that same um call to like space and to exploring and, and floating freely um so amazing yeah and it's Claude Shield so they have all the songs progress, all the tracks progress, and um, hopefully it, it kind of will be in line with how you play the level. Mm. It can't match it in purpose, purpose, you know, it's exactly. But it's it's it should kind of flow with you ideally. Nice. Have you had a chance to play the full game and to uh, and to hear the implementation for yourself? I actually have not played the full game. There, there is an ending that I have not seen yet. There's, um, th there's part of the game I have not played. I've been a part of the development and I've been playing the game for five years, and but I actually have not played the full game. <laughs> Somebody get Rob Kovacs a headset. Oh, I have like, a headset. You I, have no, headset. Just, I do. Yeah, I have a headset. Like I've been part of the dev, dev team. Like, I, oh, yeah. but oh. I have not. And I was even part of like, yeah, we, I'm curious to see what the ending is. Cause like I had an idea for the ending. So I wonder if that's kind of what happened. I don't know. <laughs> no spoilers, no spoilers in chat folks. <laughs> Rob doesn't know the ending to the game. They haven't played it. The game's not out yet. It comes out 31st. Oh, oh so man. Uh, well, uh, speaking of, I believe that we are going to have a copy of the game to hand out. Isn't that right, Rob? Yeah. We're yeah. going to give away a copy of the game at some point. Yeah, I think at the end. Uh, at the end, now? are we doing are we doing the album first or the game first? 
Which do you want to Let's hand do the first? album first. Okay, we'll do the album first. Why don't we do that after this next track? Um, awesome. All right. And folks, this is... Uh, <laughs> we got some of Rob's mods in chat to help out if things just turn into a mess. But uh, we're going to try Nightbot giveaways feature... Nightbot's giveaway feature. Um, so what's, what's, a good, uh, what's a good keyword that we can ask... Uh, people to put in chat, Rob, if they are interested in getting a free album. Um, can we do album? Can Excellent. we do album? album? All right. Okay, uh, folks. Yeah, if you say the word album in chat over the course of the next song <laughs> at any point or at multiple points, uh, you will be put into a draw to win the Straylight original game soundtrack in digital form. Um, yeah, Rob, uh, do you want to say anything about this next track before we get into it? I believe we are on Void Compass. Um, I see there is an easy mode said we could do a whole Straylight remix album. That would be absolutely dope. And I would love that. So good thinking. Um, that would be awesome. Uh, this next track is the most hype track. It's super fast. It's like 192. I don't remember the exact BPM now, but it's super fast. Um, it is, and this one was written for this game in, in mind. I think this was the fourth, no, the, yeah, the fourth track I did. Mm. Um, it just uses the same eight chords the whole time. And just it's through composed, meaning it's not, just, none of the sections repeat. It just kind of keeps going. And we needed a song that encourages the player to go fast. So in this this level, you have to gain a certain amount of speed. Earlier on, the game was a lot harder to get speed, but now it's a little easier. Mm -hmm. So it's not the level isn't as hard as it used to be. You've but anyway, the, the level is supposed dash. to encourage you to to go fast. So this was the first <laughs> single that we released. So a lot of you already heard this one. We got the video as well. Dan Siri did a great job making the video. And yeah, that's it. I really like this one. Yeah. All right, I do too. Uh, let's get into it, folks. This is Void Compass. Let's listen.
man, that one is a solid bop. That's uh oh the the pace of that one it's incredible just like you said whatever the bpm is uh you know you are definitely picking up speed and you are flying by that point uh that's incredible thank you <laughs> yeah thank you so much thanks for the claps everyone i appreciate it it's great seeing everybody just enjoy the track your song is good your song thank is you. good yeah. <laughs> that's an, an objective <laughs> opinion right there oh my gosh all right folks and uh and as stated if you have said the word album in chat by now uh then you are eligible for the album giveaway which is going to be on Bandcamp. so are we ready to draw all right last chance type album in chat if you want to get if you want to get a free download of the album <laughs> high quality lossless waves or mp3s you can pretty much pick whatever version you want but it'd be the straight most from digital if... of albums <laughs> yeah yeah, the most oh, digital man. version of the album that you can get is right now. You can get it for free if you type in "album" in the chat. Can you buy a right. hard copy? Says Eric MG. Yes. Yes, definitely. We have. Um, we only have a vinyl option right now. So if the game does well and and, the, and and maybe down the road we can get CDs or tapes, but right now the only option is a vinyl campaign, mm. which we are running. Um, I have a, a little graphic up here. Mm -hmm. made by uh cashmere feline um but yeah we have a, a vinyl campaign with three different levels the test pressings are all gone but we have a regular vinyl a dark purple um the whole vinyl is dark purple matching the game um and then we also have a second tier that comes with the vinyl and a 12 by 24 inch poster from the game which i will be able to sign i don't think i mentioned that mentioned that in the band camp description but we'll be printing those so the posters um will be signed so if you want to support the, if you want to get a card copy, please do check out the vinyl campaign. Do we have a link to that? Thank you, Bonus Stage Van. Yep. There's a link. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, Sitting right here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a link. So we're at, it's one of those campaigns. We're at 36%. We have to get 100%. Otherwise, you know, they don't get printed. So yeah. it's a crowdfund campaign through Bandcamp. Um, and they handle everything, which is actually really convenient. Mm -hmm. So we're about 36% of the way there. So if you want, Please do. Please do consider supporting the uh, the vinyl campaign. Yeah, definitely. And uh, and for those of you who may be a little less patient, are we ready to do our giveaway? Why don't we get a drum roll? Uh, folks, if you've got drum emotes or any kind of roll in chat. Also, Rob, yeah, give us like a little roll on the low end there. Ooh. All right. And here we go. Theology Music. Congratulations, what? Theology Music. You have won yourself the album. <laughs> you won the game and you are such a cool person. Okay, uh, <laughs> let me get you, let me uh, whisper, <laughs> not like, like actually like whispering, like AS ASMR or anything, but I will whisper <laughs> Uh, the code and the link to you, Theology Music, uh, once we get on with this next song. So congratulations and thank you, everybody, uh, for using the word album in chat. Uh, we I'm do so, have I'm one so more giveaway. <laughs> we so do have one more wanted. giveaway. Theology is a great uh, VGM. He's been on. Has he been he's, on your show? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's been oh, on. Yeah. He was on just uh, yeah. just like a couple weeks ago. <laughs> Shout out to Theology Music. He does great EDM, VGM stuff. There, he has a secret of mana album coming out or working oh, yeah. on which yeah. is uh he's I doing like the whole it. soundtrack he's doing the yeah, entire secret of mana thing as his first it's, uh i don't know apparently i don't follow theology music so i'm gonna hit that follow part yeah. and yeah i'm so glad you want to do it dude. and i would absolutely love a uh to hear any sort of remix ideas that you have <laughs> for any of these oh gosh he'll probably get you to to collab something live you give, give him a live take or something like that Oh man. Um, yeah. Love what you're doing totally. theology. Uh, we are going to have one more giveaway for a copy of the game, uh, for anybody who, uh, wants a shot at that. Uh, you know, obviously you need to have a VR set to, to play the game or, you know, know a friend who does so that you can, you can try it out and listen to this album in its intended setting. Um, but, but speaking of which Rob, you were featuring, uh, that last song, in the setting of MAGFest. Uh, wasn't that right? You played with uh, Drum, uh, Drum Palombi. <laughs> Dom Palombi. Drum Palombi. During your Belvedere set. 
Yeah, I got to play at MAGFest this year, the Belvedere Lobby, and I've played there four years. And this year I wanted to do something a little different and invite different artists. We had 10 different guests. Um, people, most people that I've worked, most of all, all of them I'd worked with at some point. Um, so many people have given me so many opportunities throughout these past five years. And it was nice to be able to use my stage to feature them. And um, that was great. And so Dom was one of the people who played with me. And um, he... I was planning on just kind of doing this one thing kind of solo or playing with the track. Um, I, this is my way of kind of featuring Straylight. But Dom was like, I, yeah, I, mean, I could learn that. So he <laughs> learned like the drum part and um, did an awesome job. And we played it live. I did a solo piano version of it and with live drums. And it was super fire. And Dom actually absolutely killed it. Yeah, yeah, he did. Those beats are not hard to pull or not hard. They are not easy to pull off. Uh, <laughs> it was incredible to tune in to, and to watch that. Um, yeah, well, uh, why don't we move right along then? We've got uh, we got five more awesome tracks on this soundtrack to go through, and the next one is called Devil Star. Why is it called Devil Star, Rob? Bro, you guys, you guys aren't ready for this one. Um, this was a hard one of the hardest, probably the hardest one for me to write. Um, I knew I had to write this song like since day. We had this level like early on and uh, it's called Devil Star because the level is shaped like a pentagram. Um, there was a feature early on in the game where like when you get a checkpoint, <clears throat> it would connect a beam from checkpoint to checkpoint. So then you had these like beams all over and it ended up looking like a star or a pentagram. We got rid of that light thing though, so it doesn't do that anymore, but it's still shaped that way. Hmm. And so it's just like the darkest level, like the demonic looking level. And it had, you know, devil in the idea. So this was the only level where the director had like a song in mind. He gave me like a um, Iron Maiden song that he threw in there. This was like, <laughs> I was like, this is not my wheelhouse. No, I'm trying to picture you just like Bruce uh, Dickinson up there. <laughs> Yeah, like, oh, uh, I mean, this is sweet. It's like, all right. Well, this was early. Like, I only had the Stray Light theme, so I hadn't written anything else. And this was one of the next song I knew I had to write. Um, my first attempt at, at at writing it ended up being Ouroboros, which is you know, it was very different, and it's energetic, but it's not Devil Star. And this this was like the third final track that I did. So I didn't have many ideas. I just had like a sound in mind. There was this one sound on the Prophet 5, which is like kind of sounds like a guitar. In fact, um, how, do you guys know Daft Punk's Robot Rock? Robot Rock. <laughs> um, if you've ever heard that track, ones in chat if you've ever heard that track. So that exact sound is not a guitar. It's a, it's a Prophet 5 patch 32, default patch. So this is the only patch. This is pretty much the only patch in the game, which I didn't make. So I just kept this one. So there's a nod to Daft Punk in this track. Nice. There's also, that riff is in the song. Uh, that riff is in the song somewhere. If you if you catch it, I'd be really impressed. No one's ever caught it. But oh. it is, it's right there. It's in there. Um, so that's the only idea I have for this one. It's like, I have this sound, and then eventually everything else came after it. But it took me... It took me a long time. There is some like, I, I kind of pictured as like, there's like the devil, there's like demon or whatever that uh, most of this, the most of the song. And then at one point in the song, there's like an angel that comes in and like tries to save, tries to save the day. And it, and it's like doing a great job, whatever it's, it's, it's taking over. But then, um, then the, the demon comes back and like tears it back down. So you can listen for that. That's the whole prog process of the song. Yeah, it sounds like a, like a tug of war, like there's a tether between two points. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, I'm really folks. excited for you all to hear this. This is the heaviest thing I've ever made. For wow. Me. All right. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah, it doesn't get much better than that. Awesome. Let's uh, let's dig into it, folks. This is Devil Star. Let's listen.
Wow. Yeah, that one was uh was <laughs> that was a real blood pumping track right up until the end there. Oh my god. Uh I love the the play and contrast between your different melodies and your different tones and stuff like that. Really uh really got that tether vibe going on, you know? <laughs> <laughs> really de- leaning into the tether pun. <laughs> it's great. Oh uh, thanks. Yeah, I was yeah, the end there. I was just telling Josh, but uh, yeah, the, the, near the end, we have like this sweeping, fluty sounding melody that kind of comes in and it's, you know, the drums kind of calm down and it's lots of s- leaps and just like swooping melody and it's like rising and rising and rising. Then finally, this dark sawtooth uh, lead line comes in and just like takes over. And now we just have like chromatic, chromatic. It's complete opposite of what we just heard. Just and the, and the chords too. That's the last chord. It just like drops everything down. It just to me it feels so much so has so much weight and just feels yeah. so demonic and heavy. Yeah, like like a, like some kind of devil star that you're right beside is just drawing you towards it. Um, exactly. Now, yeah. now for the first track that you wrote, uh, the, you know the very initial theme that you wrote for stray light back during the game jam days um obviously you you didn't have a lot to go on uh for writing that track uh for for example this track like what what kind of like imagery did you get what kind of direction you know you said the iron maiden thing but like did you kind of know what the level was going to look like or anything like that uh to inspire the music for this track yeah after that i played pretty much all the levels and played all the games played all the game played all the levels so um I might come up with an idea and like and be like, oh, this would fit this level. And then I would kind of continue to shape it with that level in mind. Um, so yeah, this one, I clearly had the level in mind the whole time. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and then direction from everyone else was pretty much, they pretty much just let me do whatever I want. I would just send them a track and maybe, and I, I rarely, I don't like sending people ideas of tracks because it's mm-hmm. hard for them to imagine what it could be. They kind of just hear it as it is. And it's like, oh, well, this isn't, this isn't that good. It was not done. So I don't like sending people ideas until it's done. So I mostly just send them tracks or something. (laughs) Yeah. Um, I mostly just send them a finished song and they would really love every track I sent them, which was great for me. They gave me tons of freedom to um, uh, do whatever, you know, whatever I felt was best. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was actually only one track that I had to kind of rework. And that was the, the final track. And we, we can talk about that one when we get to it, but that was the but I, that was the only one I kind of had to rework a bit. Mm-hmm. Nice, nice. Um, yeah. Well, the next one uh, is one that also got an edit, at least in terms of the masters that I received. Um, but this one is called the Railgun Run. Now, you know, like in the game, it looks like you just have two little Mega Man hands, and you're doing your Spider Man thing. Uh, why? Why is this one called the Railgun Run? They, I didn't have any really say in the naming of any of these levels. The uh, so Ben and Len, the gra- the director, level designer, and the and Len, the graphic artist, they came in, came up with all the level names, based off um, the uh, uh, the a uh, book and uh, the Necromancer. Now I forget the name of the book, but Stray Light Run is from a book, <laughs> and um, so we just kind of they kind of took some of the naming uh, concepts from that. That's about the only, um, ne- that's all it's based off of. <laughs> the um, <laughs> yeah. So stray light run, the rail gun run. That's what we ended up with. This, this level had multiple names. It was called accelerator rings initially, and then something else. And, um, and then, yeah. So we ended up with the rail gun run, mm-hmm. um, musically this, idea I, was one of the earlier ideas i had and then like just got stuck i couldn't make it into anything um and it was the last song that i finished and i finished it just like a month uh before where everything had to be done or pretty much not even, like it was done pretty late uh-huh. um but made some changes to the initial idea and then i was able to roll with it and but i was always i always had this level in mind for this idea very cool All right, well, we're going to hear all about it. This is the Railgun Run. Let's listen.
There we go. Yeah, that that definitely evokes images of of rail guns and you know, just like calmly and peacefully uh that scene from Terminator, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> just totally. mowing it down, making sure that he shoots all the little uh checkpoints and stuff. Oh, lovely. <laughs> uh someone said, "What time signature is that in?" It's in 4/4. Four, four. It's just heavily syncopated. Yeah. 1 2 Wait, 1 2 one, two, three, four. One, two, three, three, four. <laughs> anyway, that's the beat. It doesn't change, but oh, it is yeah. just syncopated in a weird yeah. way. But I, I know. I didn't. Ha I haven't tried to play and count that. <laughs> you had a machine to count along, so you didn't have to do it in your head. You can just right. focus on the notes. Oh man, Rob. Well, you're you're an expert in in the rhythm, anyways. You know. Uh, just <laughs> Two, three, three, four. <laughs> oh, man. oh man. Oh well. Speaking of counting, what is what's what's like the what's the score like in the game? Like uh, like you know, are there like extra things that you can collect when you're along the way to like unlock things or or uh, do special yeah. events in the game? Yeah. There are, so we have these collector cubes, which you've seen kind of in some of the videos. Um, and those unlock um, ghosts, which you can then race against. So there's both, um, there's three levels of ghosts, bronze, silver, and gold. And basically, it's, we, bronze is the easiest, the gold is the hardest to beat. So then you're trying to actually race against them. But first, you have to beat the level and you have to get all the cubes so once you do all that then you have access to the different uh the different ghosts there's also some other like secret um stuff that you can unlock as well there's also a zen mode where you can play the game without worrying about hitting stuff so if you like normally if you hit something you'll you'll die and you have to reset or you'll re you'll restart from your checkpoint but there's also a zen mode where you can just float through everything and just kind of enjoy floating around Nice. Um, we also there's also a hard mode. There's a whole, whole chunk of the game that is uh, super difficult. Yeah, Moo Man. There is no easy mode. Oh, there's <laughs> just no. a Zen mode and a hard mode. Oh man, that's awesome. <laughs> there is no hard mode. Oh my god. Uh, what what's the what's the hard mode music? Have we heard that yet? Is that Devil Star? <laughs> so the hard mode um, stuff is uh, each world but a redesigned level. Mm -hmm. way harder so the same music for each hard mode level uh, is the same oh. both both parts very cool very cool cool sweet well we've got uh we've got two more feature tracks and then of course the end the t the uh i guess that's going to be the credits music or no, is it like a proper ending a, to the game it's a it's a it is a level it is a level okay it is a level but you haven't heard it yet because it's you haven't a, finished no. the game the level is called. I'm kind of giving a spoiler if I if I explain that, but yeah. Oh, it's okay. Kind of, it's kind well, of we don't have to spoil it yet. We can get to that because we got uh, we've got coming up next. We've got the ascent of the juggernaut. Um, now, now, Devil Star sounded kind of like boss music. If there was a boss in this game, uh, what yeah. is the what is the juggernaut? I mean, I guess you said <laughs> you you handed off any uh, creative responsibility on these titles to uh, to your development team. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> what's the essential the level, of the juggernaut? The level is massive, actually. So it's a good name because like the level that this was written for um, is massive looking, and you're kind of like at the edge of a cliff, kind of, and you kind of go down and there's this other huge thing in front of you. So the name, the name still fits. This is my personal favorite. This is the one that I like compositionally, I feel the most proud of. Um, I was, the inspiration was I was playing in a musical and I was playing, what was the musical Irving Berlin's it's winter wonderland or whatever his musical is. It was, you know, not interesting, but I was playing string patches and I just kind of came up with these, this chord progression. Uh, that could then kind of go anywhere and I thought what if I just never have it loop it's like built on four chords but every four chords is different than the previous four chords so that's this this piece it never repeats um, different um, groups of four chords will come back but you'll never you never know what's coming next but mm. yet it still feels natural that was the, at least that was the idea sounds like some Chopin 
yeah it's it goes all over the place um but uh this one is this one is my favorite one this is like i think like the magnum opus of the record uh white christmas that was the show yeah thank you that was the show <laughs> that i i played it um i'm yeah i'm just really excited for you to hear this one this one was double star was like the hardest to write this was the next hardest to write many 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 hours on this one. Oh my gosh all right, well, it's only going to take us a few minutes, folks. This is Rob Kovac's favorite track from the Straylight original game soundtrack. Let's listen to Ascent of the Juggernaut.
there it is. It, Rob's favorite track on the whole soundtrack, everybody. Uh, you clearly put a lot of love and effort into it as well. Um, that one, I think, uh, more than any so far, have really captured that sense of floating and uh, and not being grounded. You know, the time signature definitely contributed to that. Um, like the chord structures and stuff like that really contributed as well. Uh, so I think that one, that is very much the Stray Light definitive track right there so far for me <laughs> well thank you thank you very much yeah i'm really I'm really proud of that one harmonically it's all um i was saying a little bit but harmonically you have like i kind of think of it in two different parts you have the triad and then you have a bass note and then they're never the same they're always different they're like trying to find each other or like orbiting around each other and they never do mm -hmm. like it's never a it's never a g flat over a g flat it's a g flat over b or f sharp over b it's all these slash chords and that again leads to that feeling of never grounded it never it never feels quite settled mm -hmm. and you're always just kind of floating <laughs> thank you for the kind words in chat everyone lightning arts what's up thank you oh we do uh, robo rob music i just i want to shout out shout out to robo rob so um i recorded and produced and composed everything and mixed everything but um it wouldn't sound like it way it is without robo rob i reached out to him to have him uh, master the record um, so he did some additional mixing and, and mastering, which just made it sound the way it sounds, made it sound so professional. Um, I gave him uh, stems to work with, two different drum stems, kick and percussion and bass and snare. And he um, really just made everything pop and, and hit hard and then like sound super full. So Robo Rob music is also save point. So we've worked together on that, the Super Mario 64 stuff and a couple other Karaga tracks. Um, He's the mastermind behind Karaga Records. So if you love Karaga Records and Firaga Records, that's Robo Rob music right there. Oh, man. So big shout out to Robo Rob. Thank you for all your work on this, Rob. It certainly would not sound this uh, the way it does without you. Absolutely. Yeah, totally incredible. Um, you wanted to make sure, uh, speaking of shout outs, that people get the link to uh, pre-save the Straylight soundtrack on uh, on Spotify. Um, so yeah, there it is in chat folks. Definitely. Uh, if you want to follow the album and, and, you know, be there for, uh, for the release, cause that is happening, um, at, uh, at 12 midnight, uh, that's Eastern time, correct? Yeah. So I think you'll get it a little early. Yeah. Well, we'll I love being on the West coast cause we always get it early. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be up at 9 PM here on the West coast for the drop. Um, yeah, definitely go make sure you click that link, uh, pre-save it to your Spotify and uh um, yeah and please do it really, to, yeah it, it, really it helps, helps rob out a lot uh you know it helps i literally with... texted over 100 people today just with that link like my album's coming out today please pre-save this <laughs> anyone that i texted in like the past year got a text from me oh my god pretty much rob, you are you are putting in the work dude my goodness this is why you do it you make music so people can hear it and yep. I want people I want people to hear it. And this is I'm never been more proud of anything I've ever made than this album. Wow. And I want people to hear it. Well, so we can just let go of your past <laughs> <laughs> records. <laughs> They're good too, but this one's better. Yeah. This one is this one is oh. this well that's better. that's this what all artists hope for is uh, is to continue continue to improve and enjoy the work that they're that they're releasing. Um, so congratulations. I didn't actually text Panda Volta. Oh, right. okay. I, I, I spared Pan, some you people. Tell Panda Volta like directly right now. <laughs> I, I knew you'd already pre-saved us. I was like, okay, I don't have to, I don't have to spam Panda Volta. <laughs> so. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> oh no. People are like, I didn't get a text. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Folks. Like, Please do follow it. Yeah, yeah, please do hit that pre-save button. Oh man, and and somebody put Rob's number in chat so that uh, so that we can all hound him for for the next album no. release. We want. <laughs> no, no, we're good. No. Okay. Oh god. I've been trying to reach you. <laughs> oh wow. Oh Kimberly, there with a very authentic <laughs> submission. Uh, <laughs> we just got a couple more tracks on nice. this and, uh, and coming back to what you were saying about, um, you know, like, like pieces of your music, uh, trying to find each other. Uh, we come to the title of this next track, which is, uh, Ouroboros, which of course yeah. is the, uh, is 
the snake eating its own tail. Is that uh, is that a feature of the level, or is that a uh, mode that you were going for with the composition, or a little bit of column A, column B? Um, yeah, ex- absolutely. Did I already tell you that? Did you just no, very good. Absolutely. Yeah. I know um, what an yeah, the, Morris is. <laughs> with this this level was originally called Infinity Gauntlet before before the big movie. Oh, so you guys had it first. Okay, yeah. Yeah, first. (laughs) And then then, Marvel comes in and swoops up, Yeah, puts the patent in, and you're screwed. Oh, dang it. We can't use that name. Um, (laughs) We probably could still use the name, but uh, they didn't want to touch it. So um, it was called Infinity Gauntlet because the level is shaped like an infinity symbol. Hmm. And so Ouroboros was the next best um, thing. And yeah, this this music was... This was the second track I ever made. It was right after I got the uh, MIDI kit installed so i was able to like program notes i also had some advice from david young who worked on a lot of sega genesis games or sega cd games like uh echo the dolphin and sonic cd he worked with spencer nielsen uh and the two of them composed all these scores and, he, and so david young uh we've become friends and he's a local cleveland guy here and he you know grew up with all this stuff and all these synths and i was like how can i make my track like how can i make it sound and do you have any advice? And so I sent him what I had and he was like, yeah, he gave me some good advice. He's like, you know, maybe put some modulation on it. Like, cute, you know, the, the synth sound kind of flat. So maybe like, you know, modulate them as they go. So this one, um, there's a lot more modulation kind of going happening uh, throughout that. But I definitely kept that mindset through the rest of the tracks that I made. They all, there's there's motion to the sounds um, throughout, through, for all the sounds, as I hope. Um, so yeah, this is called Ouroboros. It's in two tracks. There's two parts. There's an A part and a B part. Um, they both both parts start in A minor, and but the first part's really in C, and then the second part is in A. So they both have a same meeting point, but they go to two different places. Oh, wow, like like an infinity symbol or gauntlet. I, I get it now. The gauntlet being the thing that you have to go through, yes. not the thing not you put on your fist and and snap. Uh, half of existence out of uh, out of existence. Right. Uh, right. <laughs> but I think we're going to do a giveaway during this one. Yes, absolutely. So we're going to be doing another giveaway. And, um, you know, of course, everybody is encouraged to participate, but this is going to be a giveaway for a copy of the Straylight game itself. Um, so obviously you can't play that unless you yourself have access to a VR headset. Um, so, you know, if, if there's no way that you are going to play, you know, consider just leaving it up to to those uh, who will be able to make good of the game. But um, but yeah, during this next song, if you want to type VR into chat, uh, then you will be eligible for um, for this giveaway. And uh, yeah, and let me just make sure I actually have that all set up here. Let's reset. Yeah, that. so we'll, you'll, we'll give you a, a Steam key, specifically yeah. a Steam uh, a steam key it will be available the game will be available on all pretty much all headsets it'll be on all the steam uh headsets uh quest one and two um oculus uh as well as psvr so if you have ps if you have playstation vr dust off that playstation vr get the stray light it um the fact that we're honest an official sony game is like really exciting for us we're super proud of that five percent that took the long that's the main reason why the game took so long but it made the game better got rid of a lot of bugs and it's on playstation vr but this specific key that i have is just for the steam version of the game so keep that in mind and if you don't have vr and you have a friend who has vr you can and you win you can give them the key yeah that works too yeah share it with a friend um <laughs> yeah we're gonna get into uh, ouroboros the snake that eats its own tail Um, So yeah, let's listen.
Oh man, there it is. Rob Kovacs least favorite track on the album. Uh, no, 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 just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, we, we had the most favorite. I mean, I, I, you don't have to out it, but there's got to be. <laughs> I don't even know what my least favorite is. Oh, I like all, I mean, I like all of them. They're all your children. How do you say they that you love one more children. than the other? Well, you did, all, you yeah. did already, but no. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did. Oh, and I do like a lot. There's not one, I don't know what my least favorite one would be. I you don't, don't have to pick it. You, you, they're all, yeah, that's right, Heavy Kettle. They are all wonderful. Uh, I don't care for <laughs> Gob. <laughs> oh, man. I must have missed that one. Did we pass that one already? Oh, gosh. Uh, well, folks, that is um, that is Ouroboros. And, uh, and as many of you have participated, um, we have the, uh, the, I almost said the album, we have the game. We have the Stray Light game uh, Steam code available for, uh, for giveaway. Um, and I believe we've probably gotten everybody in who wants to participate in that giveaway. So Let's give can one we more get... chance. One, one more, more chance? chance if you okay. yeah if you haven't yet and you want to get a chance to win a free copy of the game type VR in the chat there we go uh well while they're they're incessantly writing those two letters uh yeah why don't uh, why don't we get ready here because we just have one more track uh before you know obviously all good things must come to an end and uh and just like uh, just like this game so um now from what you've said, you haven't heard this track before because you haven't beat the game. Uh, so with that no. in mind, what can you really tell us about the end here, Rob? Um, this, uh, so this is the one track I had to rework. Uh, this is the only track that I had already composed. Um, and I thought it would work for the game. Uh, it was a piano idea that I ha had in college and I it's in three sections and the I had like the first two sections written in college and it was just like a piano idea and then years later like 10 years later I came up with the a third section uh, the final section and I just thought it would be such a cool it's idea for this um for this game it seemed like it fit um but the first variation is the only one also that uses an actual piano. So there is actual piano in it. There's a real shaker in it. So it has some non-synthetic sounds in it. And I thought that would be really cool for the final level of the game. So this is the, the final uh, final level um, to have a different timbre all of a sudden. But the, ver the version that I sent initially was just, it just didn't hit hard enough for the final level. And it was too different. So they gave me that feedback and I was like, yeah. I don't want that to be right, but you're right. It, it doesn't quite work. So I had to rework it, um, bring more of the synth elements that the other songs had. Um, and then, uh, and then the ending though, the ending is like not, I, is, is the, like one of the most beautiful things that I've ever created. So I'm really excited for you to hear the ending. The ending melody was written recently. So that, that wasn't written. The, I didn't have that part. The, the ending melody that is at the end is, um, really pretty and i'm really proud of that i'm pretty proud of all these melodies that's another thing that i really focused on with this album is having long expanding developing melodies that are clear and you can grab onto but also unique where you don't quite guess you can't guess where they're going to go and makes you want to listen to them again so this is the last one it's called the end and uh but i think we're going to pull a winner yeah i that's think we've we got all it. of our entrants in uh, without any further ado, can we get a roll? Anybody in chat with a drum roll? Uh, Rob, a little something here. As we get ready to roll our winner of the Steam Code for Straylight, the original video game on VR headset, it is DTS 4000. <laughs> Congratulations, DTS 4000. Awesome. You did it. DTS. You won. <laughs> oh man, uh, it, it, this is not rigged in any way. Um, that reminds me. Heck I better, yeah, DTS. Uh, that reminds me. I better uh, actually give theology his <laughs> download code. I completely forgot, but I will. Uh, I will make sure to get everybody their prizes awarded during uh, during this last track. Uh, so sad to say, this is the end by rob kovacs uh so this is the end this is the end of the, the world of the game as composed by rob kovacs um let's listen
Oh gosh. Well, I'm ready for bed. Uh, <laughs> I feel like Rob is just like sonically like tucked me in after a cup of warm milk, and I am just uh, I'm just ready to float, float on. Uh, <laughs> Good. That's great. Good ending. Oh yes, so Bravo. Thank lots you. Of, lots of wonderful wave. things being said in the chat about that. What a fantastic um, finish. That is it. This is it. Wonderful. Thank you so much, drummer Andrew. A VR blanket. Amazing. Thank you, Panda. <laughs> oh, well, thank you, uh, Rob, for, for doing me the honor of, uh, of having your first listen through of the full album here on bonus stage. Uh, it's been a real honor and, um, and yeah, uh, well, I mean, there's lots to talk about in terms of like where to get the album, what to support. Uh, we definitely want to make sure again, people are pre-saving it on Spotify, uh, as well as um, as going to the vinyl link and making sure that you uh, you help that campaign because if they don't meet it then it doesn't get printed and a lot of people will be sad including Rob and myself. I need to uh, I need to add the Straylight vinyl collection to go right next to Rob Kovacs. Let go. So uh, don't let my dreams <laughs> die, everybody. Um... <laughs> well, thank you, Josh. The honor is mine. Thank you for creating this opportunity for artists like me and others uh, to have a place to listen to uh, our music for the first time. This is a really special event. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And very make much. sure everybody's following Josh. Make sure you're following Bonus Stage Vans so you know when the next ones happen. <laughs> Events and the uh, listening parties. Yeah, definitely. Uh, well, you are uh, you are an especially busy man this weekend. Um, uh, you've got a lot of stuff going on, uh, you know, obviously this and, and the release of of the Straylight soundtrack and the game itself, but you are also um, not sleeping tonight because you have to catch a flight. Uh, where are you headed, Rob? I do have to catch a flight. I'm going to San Antonio. So if you're in San Antonio, hopefully I'll see you this weekend playing at Super Bit Fest. I'm playing Saturday at 8. I'm also playing some other sets might jump in with mega ran and creative mind frame and i'm supposed to do something with um triforce quartet this time as well so wow. super bit fest two-day event friday and saturday in san antonio texas starts tomorrow yeah I'm super pumped dang and, and then uh, after that are you gonna kick your feet up <laughs> yeah well i agreed to play in this contemporary ensemble called no exit so we have a concert series the week after uh the week i get back so three concerts and then Two weeks later, we'll be in Minneapolis for three concerts there as well. And uh, then maybe then I can take a minute to relax. It's yeah. been pretty go, go, go fast six months. I mean, you got to you gotta make some time to uh, to finally beat Straylight. So, you know. I know. I need to do that. I need to do that. <laughs> but also, thank you, everyone, who's already pledged. I mean, a lot of you have pledged for the vinyl. So thank you so much. I am... Um, don't because it goes to the label i don't actually know who has so if you, but when i find out i will thank everyone so thank you um, <laughs> until then you know it. who you are <laughs> yeah yeah you know you are so thank you um if you're if you want to support the album and even if you don't have a record player you just want some sort of physical copy i would be more than super grateful for you to um pledge uh for a vinyl and or the poster mm -hmm. um and i know that i saw the link several times but there's a pinned link as well which will take you um to the vinyl campaign and and then the game comes out the 31st so if you're looking for it on vr it'll be on every headset january 31st <laughs> awesome uh yeah is there anybody else that we need to shout out or or credit before we wrap things up here all the mods thank you mods for yeah. hanging out and for uh jumping in on bonus stage uh, all my mods for helping out on the, on the <laughs> bonus aid stream today. Panda Volta, DTS, JR Rogue, Gibson Lens, Taladar, and then uh, and then all of uh, bonus stages mods. Thank you, yeah. Darmok. There is Thanks, no easy Darmok. mode. Thanks, Moo Man. <laughs> Appreciate you all. Right on. Uh, thanks to everyone on Straylight who's made this game possible. I would not have been able to make, would have never written this music without the game. <laughs> and it's been, it's been a thrilling experience. Oh. Well, I can't wait for your next album, Untethered. Uh, <laughs> that can be a, for a video game that uh, that does not exist, so that you you just you pull inspiration from wherever you feel like it. Uh, <laughs> floating free, untethered. You know, Rob, it's something to think about. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, okay. I'll think about it. All right. <laughs> well, I think we're all done here then. It's all decided. Uh, thanks again, Rob, for being on the show. Uh, I'm going to put on a little bit of music while we um, while we wind things down here. And if there's anybody online that we want to go say hi to uh, before the night is, is over, we can do a raid. Um, but other than that, thanks, Rob. Thank you, everybody, for joining us here for another Let's Listen. Hope you enjoyed the album, and we'll see you here next time. All right, everybody, take care. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, John.